This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Can you believe it's January and we're out here in our garden clothes, sweatshirt and rain pants? Well, let's get a jump on spring and do a little edging. You're such an angel. In the winter, I would never turn the soil over, but we have an existing edge here and we might as well clean it up. We have nothing else to do this time of the year. Using my grandfather's old half moon edger, it's a great tool for the job. And we're just gonna follow the line that was already here and just give it a nice sharp edge and it's gonna look so much better. Well, doesn't it look better? Having that demarcation between the lawn and the garden is great. We'll have to do this again in the spring, but this is gonna make it a lot easier when we do get to it next year. Now, speaking of spring, lots of stuff sprouting up. Let's take a look at it and see what to do about that. Have I told you how good you look? Now, one thing great about putting that edge on there is the grass can't grow into the bed because grass can't grow into air. Now, let's take a look at some of those things that are sprouting. Ah, oh, I could stay here all day out in the garden, but we're getting lots of calls about stuff like this where the bulbs are coming up, whether it's daffodils, in this case it's a lily, but crocuses and other things. And when this happens this time of the year, there's actually nothing to do. Uh, if you were to throw some kind of mulch over this, you'd be doing more harm than good. So we just have to let them go. The good news is all it's sending up is some foliage and the buds are underneath and they're safe. And when things get cold, this will all go dormant and hopefully these will bloom at the right time in the spring. But we have something else sprouting that we're excited about. So with our bulbs, we're not used to seeing those sprouting in January and even seeing some shrubs blooming, but again, there's nothing we can do about it. But these plants here, we are happy to see them. They're in their second year. These are foxglove. And last year, there was some foxglove up in here. They dropped their seeds. These sprouted. They're what we call biennials, meaning the first year, they're just foliage, which is what they are now. Next spring, they're gonna be blooms. And they're a surprise because they'll end up anywhere that the plant throws its seeds. And the next thing we're going to do is deal with the deer and they've caused some serious damage this winter. Well, before we get to the deer, right next to the foxglove, I noticed this. I don't know what it is. I have no recollection of planting it. It looks like a caladium, but caladiums can't take any cold. I'm going to have to figure out what that is because it is cool looking. All right, off to the deer. Oh boy, our worst year for the deer continues. A buck rubbed this Coosa dogwood, one of my favorite trees. Now, back in the day, we would put some tree goop on this, but experts tell us today not to do that, to let the tree heal naturally. When we were putting that goop on here, we were actually keeping diseases inside, which we don't want to do. So I don't have a lot of hope for this tree, although it didn't get the bark all the way around, but this peeling bark down here doesn't look too good. And I should have had this protected. I hadn't seen the deer rubbing a tree this big, but I got a big buck running and that's what he's doing. Now, the other thing we got to think about with the deer is to keep vigilant with our spraying. I love this Bob X stuff. It keeps the deer off. And right behind there is a nice rhododendron and I'm going to protect it with this spray. This rhododendron has lots of buds on it and I don't want to feed the deer with it. So I'm just going to spray my Bob X on here. We actually changed the filming position here so that Jasmine wasn't downwind. You don't want to get this stuff on you. It smells, and that's the thing that keeps the deer off. Now, I got a couple other plants that I have seen them nibbling on. I'm going to go over there and take care of them with a little bit of this Bob X, and then meet me inside to finish up. Nice to be back inside, but it's not too cold out there. Now, one thing that breaks my heart is seeing something like this poinsettia out on the curb after the holidays. This can make a great house plant. This is a new one called Prinsettia Pink that I love, but any poinsettia will love it on the windowsill. You just take off the foil for drainage. We'll put it in here, this little dish, so it catches the water and it'll grow here all winter long. At the end of May, it can go out into the garden, then come back in before frost for another holiday season. Don't throw your holiday plants away. They'll be happy right here on the windowsill. 
Now, for more information about everything we talked about today, check me out online. And believe it or not, the ground hasn't frozen yet. I've got a shrub to plant, and I found some garlic that's left over. I'm going to plant that today, too. And it's January. You can't beat that. We'll see you next week.